So as you all have probably heard me talk on my channel and Twitter about the starter kit I'm working on, I decided it's probably good enough and it's time to just release it to the public. It is free to use and it is open source MIT license. And so with that being said, if you do run into a bug, feel free to submit a pull request. We can all try to make this as polished as possible. There's a few little things I want to tweak on it still, like making it a little bit more mobile responsive on a couple of pages. But overall, I think it's a pretty good example of like a, a medium to a smaller scale project that has a lot of features and functionality. I'm following a layered architecture in terms of how the code is structured, which I think will be a good uh, learning experience for a lot of you who maybe haven't been exposed to architecture in code. Now I will say use at your own risk. This is an MIT project. So if you do run into a bug and it causes you issues, just don't hold me accountable, right? Here are some of the features that are included in the starter kit. It's next 14. We have Tailwind. We have Google and GitHub login. We have file storage, Postgres, Drizzle ORM, TypeScript, ShadCN, authentication, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. One thing I did want to point out is that although the starter kit is free, I am working on a complete video walkthrough series where I'm basically going to walk you through how do you get this thing running locally? How do you set up all the different environment variables? Because I think there's like 29 you have to get set up just to get this working. If I go over here and go to variables, yeah, I have like 31 environment variables that you need. There's stuff for Stripe, there's stuff for Cloudflare, there's your Google keys, your GitHub keys. There's stuff that you need to set for getting Next.js working. There's, there's stuff for sending out the emails with recent. And so it's not really just fork the starter kit and hit the ground running. There is setup that you're going to have to follow. And although in the readme of the starter kit, we have like walkthroughs of how to set up some of this stuff, um, I'm going to prioritize the videos first for those who want that extra helping hand to like walk through, you know, how do I actually get this deployed to production? How do I set up a Cloudflare? for the DDoS protection? How do I set up a railway deployment with Cloudflare tunnels? How do I set up these environment variables? How do I get this stuff all building? How do I set up a domain? I'm gonna buy a domain and walk you through how to do that as well and point that to Cloudflare. How do you run your migration scripts? How do you use Drizzle? How do you even navigate this code base? You kind of run through here. I mean, it's it's not a small project. It's not necessarily a large project, but it's not really a super small project. So we have a lot of different pages. And the idea is I want to walk you through a lot of the code, including like the authentication, how the Lucia auth stuff works, just so that you're not completely lost. And I think it'd be a really good learning experience. So like I mentioned, I will put the link to the starter kit walkthrough on Gumroad in the description. Right now it's early access. So if you do want to purchase this early, it's $25. But when I finish all my videos, I plan to raise it to like 50. So if you want a deal, I would say buy it now. Um, but if you feel like you can just get the stuff going by yourself, like you don't need the walkthrough if you're you're talented enough to like get this all set up. So here is the application. I want to walk you through some of the features that you're going to see in the starter kit um, project. Um, basically, I try to build out a real life application called Group Finder, where people can go and create groups and other people can join them. You can post messages and reply to messages and follow people, etc. But the first thing is important is authentication. So I'm not using Next Auth. I'm using Lucia Auth. And we have the ability to sign in with Google, sign in with GitHub, and also to sign in with Magic Link. This is going to be using Reason to send out emails, but you can hook up with whatever email provider that you want. And then also we have the ability to register, right? So you can actually create an account using an email password. You can sign in with it. You can do a forgot password link that'll send you an email. You can click on it and reset your password. Um, we have light mode. We got dark mode. We got it all. So let's just go ahead and log in with Google real quick. So I'll just go ahead and click my account. And now that you are signed in, what you can do is you can actually create your own group. So let's go over here, create a group. My, I'll say my JavaScript group testing. Go ahead and create that group. We got alerts that pop up at the bottom after you do stuff. You can see down here it says group created. And then you can go and manage your group. Now, when you create a group by default, it's private. So no one else can see this. But you can actually go to users over here, I guess members. And you can send an email invite to other members and then they'll get a invite link they can click and then they'll log in and they'll get access to this group themselves and they will pop up down here as a a member of the group you can also click on people and change them to an admin so admins are able to go and change here is my awesome javascript group the starter kit has a built-in WYSIWYG editor. So this is using TipTap as in my editor. So you can go through here, you can kind of italicize bold. This is just like the bare minimum um, of stuff that you can kind of do. But I feel like it's pretty nice. You can go ahead and save that. And then if you were to load up this group as a non-authenticated user, you will see this without the editor stuff, okay? 
let's just walk through some of the stuff. So we have posts over here. A user can come in here and create a post. How do I do a for loop? Example of a for loop. Let's create the post over here. And uh, now you can go and you can manage the post. If you're the owner of the post, you can go and paste a reply. What is up? And other users can come in and talk about the post and stuff. You can edit a post. You can delete a post. So most of the CRUD functionality with a lot of stuff, I can go back here. I can actually edit a post as well like this. Let's update it. Let's delete it. Okay. And then events. So the idea with event is you can create an event. Let's just go ahead and create an event. I don't think I have um, R2 hooked up with this deployment yet. So we'll just go ahead and create this. And then events will pop up over here, but you do have the ability to upload images to R2, which is kind of like S3 file storage, but it's for Cloudflare. I tried to keep a lot of the stuff in Cloudflare just to make stuff simpler since we are using it for like the DDoS protection and the tunnels. So you can come over here, you can edit an event or you can delete the events. Editing the event again just brings over the side panel. Uh, and then you can see like when an event's going to start. So that's basically everyone in the group can join a Discord link or they can join a Zoom or they could just meet at a certain place, um, stuff like that. We already talked about members. Let's go to settings. Oh, by the way, after you created those events, those will pop up over here. So another thing you can do is you can change your group image. You can change the name of your group. Let's just go ahead and save this. And you'll see that pops up up here. You can change your group to public. And now it's no longer private, so everyone can kind of browse for it. You can put social media links. You can update a description over here of your group. Um, and that's going to show up in the info panel over here. What is up? Um, finally, you can delete your group if you want to, and that'll give like a confirmation modal. And uh, let's just go to browse groups real quick. And so this is the group that we just made public, and it's going to show up here. You can search for groups. So if I type in like JavaScript, click search. It'll filter down and just do a query against our database to find the JavaScript keyword in the title. I think it might also search the description as well. Um, and then we also have pagination. So if you have a bunch of groups that show up, here is pagination set up, which is pretty nice. Some other stuff to point out is you can click on a user and that'll take you to their profile. So we do have user profiles set up in the starter kit where a user can come in and edit their own profile. So let's go here. They can change their profile image, their display name, their bio. This is my bio. And then I'll just bold that, save it. Let's go back and switch to my profile. Here it is. So they can type whatever they want here in the bio page. Uh, recent posts. So anything that they have posted in the application that's on a public group will show up. There's a bunch of uh, authorization checks that happen throughout this code base. So there's, there's good examples of how you can see how to do authorization checks. Like is a user part of a group? Is a user an admin of a group? Is a user an owner of a group? Which different buttons will not work depending on the role you have. Um, you can go here and see all the public groups a user is associated with. And then also, I believe there's a way to follow people. So if I were to go to a different user, just sign out real quick and sign in as somebody else. Go to Browse Groups. Just go ahead and join this group. So now we have two members in this group This updated. Uh, and we can go to Members over here. And now we can see that there's an owner and there's a member. Let's click on the other account here. And I should be able to follow that user. So now if I click on Followers, you'll see that this user pops up and I can kind of link to that user and check out his followers and stuff like that. So the idea was to have like a really basic social media type of website um, with as many authorization checks that I could build in as a good example. Go over here back to settings, uh, danger if you wanted to delete your account. You can also go here and delete your account. I got a cool little confirmation modal that pops up where you have to type please delete in order to get this going. Um, we got React hook forms on all the different forms throughout this application using Zod for validation. We got server actions for handling the backend API endpoint requests. And we also have notifications. I don't think I pointed this out, but doing certain things, like when someone creates an event on a group, that'll create a notification so that when the user logs in, they'll see those notifications pop up. Right now, there are no notifications for this user, um, but those do show up. It's not real time, it's not using WebSockets, but it is just a data structure in the database um, but it is a good start of like, okay, create a record in the database and fetch those notifications. You can mark them all as red. You can clear them. I think I could probably get a demo of that real quick if I go to my group and go to events. Uh, and then I could just create a new event like this. Just pick it on the 31st and click create event. I think that is going to send a message or send a notification to all members who are part of this group. So basically this account would get a message. Also, you can click on this and you can kick a user from a group 
So if you have a private group and you don't want someone to be in that group anymore, you can kick them. Uh, you can also promote them the admin. So if you do make them an admin, I think the admin has the ability to start kicking other people and they can also modify some th certain things. They can create events. Let's sign out one last time and then we'll go and log in as the other person over here. And now notice that we have a notification in the top right corner, which is pretty awesome. Let's click on this. It says an event has been created for the My JavaScript group you joined. Let's click it. And then that's going to mark that event as red. And it's going to actually take you to that events page so you can kind of view that. If you want to go back, notice that the notification is gone. Let's click view notification. Here it is right here. You can view it. Um, this will be a white button if you haven't read it yet. And I think it'll say like read instead. And then if you're finally done with these, you can just clear them all out, delete them all from your account. Uh, so they're not in the way. Now I will say I have a privacy policy in terms of service kind of baked into this. I would recommend that you go and actually talk to somebody or read through all this and hone it to match your needs. Like if you go through here and you decide that you want to take the starter kit and gut a lot of the stuff that I did with groups and change it, then you need to make sure that your privacy policy in terms of service reflects the changes of your application. Okay, I'm not going to go through there. I'm not a lawyer. Um, I also don't even recommend to use my terms of service. I kind of use OpenAI to help me write that. But uh, if you want to be legit, I would probably find like a terms of service generator that does a lot of stuff for you. Also, API docs. I included Fuma docs for applications that may need some type of documentation. So if you're building out like a SaaS that has a REST API endpoint or you charge for usage or something, maybe you want an API docs. Maybe this whole thing can be deleted depending on your needs. But it did take me some time to figure out how to set up Fuma docs and load that in. And I thought it'd be a good idea to add that to a starter kit. Now, I will say there are some things I want to kind of finish polishing. Like if you go mobile and like scale this down, it just doesn't look that great. Um, this is something I need to work on. But for the most part, I think the code is there. And uh, this will be a really good experience to just learn how a larger code base is created, um, especially when you need to do like authorization checks on various things. In the starter kit, I plan to walk you through how to get a production Postgres database set up. We are going to be using Supabase just because they provide two free databases. But uh, you can also use Railway. They allow you to set up a Postgres database in Railway. That's one solution. Or you can find your own Postgres host if you want to. So the last thing I want to point out, which I probably should have started with because this is probably what you guys care about, is that this is integrated with Stripe. And we have a product set up that they monthly recurring subscription. So if I were to go and do like the premium and say upgrade now, this will redirect you to the Stripe dashboard where you can pay $10 a month to get a premium subscription, enter in the information that'll call a webhook, enter in some mock information here. Let's click subscribe and that should kick us back to our app. It's gonna call a webhook endpoint on our application that is going to upgrade your account. Okay, there you go, you've been upgraded. You can go and view your settings. And once you are subscribed, you have a subscription tab, tab that'll pop up. It says you're currently using the premium plan and you can go back to Stripe to either cancel that plan or you can downgrade it to the, the basic plan. Now, one thing I do want to add in, which I haven't had time to, is like hide and show different features or do rate limiting on features based on if you're basic or premium. I haven't done that yet. And that's another thing I want to add in. But overall, I mean, the Stripe should all be integrated in all the web hooks that listen for when I get invoices sent again next month. That should be working uh, pretty well, too. So that is a complete overview of what the Group Finder Starter Kit app looks like and all the features it includes. Again, you can pick this apart, use what you want from it. You don't even have to use this. You could just kind of look through the code base and get a better understanding of how larger applications might be structured that makes it more maintainable. Again, clean architecture slash layered architecture, I think is a good approach to developing your code. So again, I will end this with some more promotion of this Gumroad course. Go check this out if you want to basically get these videos. I already have one video published um, with learning how to use the database and Drizzle, but I'm gonna publish more when I get more time and sh I should have this done pretty soon. The last thing I'll say is I have a Discord channel. So if you guys wanna join, I have a starter kit group where we can talk about this. You can maybe reach out, get some help from me or from others in the community. Uh, I wanna make this a learning experience for everyone. So definitely go check this out. Uh, and uh, other than that, have a good day and happy coding.